Hi everybody, Debbie here from Easy Piano Styles, and today's lesson is on minor voicings. So I've put this under the category of let's dissect this, and that's the harmony category. Um, harmony, I mean, I don't know about you, but harmony is just one of the best parts about music. I grew up, grown up as a singer, as a choral singer actually, and I just always been an alto, so I'm used to doing harmony, and um, I just think there's nothing like a great harmony, thick harmony. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to analyze a couple of ways to harmonize a, um, a minor chord. And I'm going to take you over to the piano for this one, give you a, a, a closer view of what I'm doing. Um, there's two voicings that I'm going to give you today. One is more of a modern sound. So um, if we have, let's say, a D minor chord, this is the sound. I'll play it for you first. That. Love that sound. Um, that's it on a C minor. Do it on F minor. That's one voicing. And the other voicing um, is... It may sound similar to you, but it's not the same. And we will go over the difference. They're actually not that hard to, to do. Um, so I'm going to bring us right over here, and we'll take a look at my fingers and what's happening here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with the first one. This is a, the easier one, I would say. So say you have a D minor. You could play D and A. That's the two outer notes in the left hand. In the right hand, I start on the third of a D minor, which would be F. And I play a major seventh chord in the right hand. So an F major seven, which would be F, A, C, and E on top. Play together. Isn't that beautiful? Now what are we getting there? We have the root the fifth, the third, which is your triad, and now we're adding the fifth again. Now we have the seventh, and the real killer note is that ninth. So we actually would call this a D minor nine. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. And of course you can do it in any inversion you want. It's more of a clustered sound, and this is more open. Very pretty. We'll do that on a different chord. Let's take a, a C minor chord. So we play the C and the G. The middle note in a C minor was E flat, right? But we're going to put that in the right hand. And we're going to play a major seventh chord built on that E flat. So it would be an E flat major. E flat, G, B flat, and D on the top. That's a major seventh. And let's know what we get. Because it's the highest note, it really sticks out, and it's a beautiful sound. It highlights it, that dissonance. I love that sound. Okay, here's one that might be a little bit more of an acquired taste, but I still love it. Um, what we do is we take the, we'll do it on D minor again. We have the D. I'm going to play the full D minor, actually. Now, in the right hand, Instead of starting the third, on the third of the chord, and building that major seventh, I'm going to start on the seventh of the chord. So this, the D minor seven would be a C. And we still, we're going to play a major seventh chord starting on the seventh. So think, major seventh starting on the seventh. And we get this sound. Ah, very modern. We did that on C minor. Oh, let's analyze that. Seventh here, the C, the E is the ninth, and now we have the eleventh, which goes great in a minor chord, the G, and then we have a thirteen. So we have a lot of extended harmony. We call this extended harmony. We're going way past the octave, and we're adding you know, seven, nine, eleven. Which is why it sounds very jazzy and kind of ethereal. You've got all these extra notes in there that extend the extended. 
extension. So if we do that on a C minor, we would do C, E flat, G. Okay, the seventh of a C minor is B flat, and we would play a B flat major seven on top. Cool, huh? We'll do one more. Um, let's do F minor. F minor. There's your triad. Now we're going to start on the seventh of that, which would be the E flat, right? And we're going to play a major seventh starting on the seventh. spread up. So in one voicing, we're starting on the seventh of the chord and playing a major seventh, and in the other voicing, we started on the third and played a major seventh voicing. And that's where you get those. Now you can put those into the songs. You would put that like kind of in between where there's a little rest or after you've played a melody note, um, then you might put the chord in there. And if you're accompanying and you don't have a melody, or you're accompanying somebody else or you're accompanying yourself singing, then you can just play the whole thing all the time. Okay, so that is the lesson on let's dissect this for today on harmony. And as I told you, I have an idea. I'm going to be offering a one hour class. I'm gonna do it on Zoom. And I'm gonna give you more information about that uh, later on. Well, what I'm thinking now is that it's gonna be a one hour class on how to play one jazz song. So um, I will give you more information about when that's gonna happen and uh, Zoom links and so forth. I think I'm just going to accept uh, 10 people and um, I'll give you the exact date and everything else later. Uh, and probably next week where I have it more formulated in my head, but it's just an idea that I had last week and I really want to fall through on that with you and I can actually meet you, um, which would be great. But I think it would be best to just start with 10 of you. So um, that's it for today. Um, Take care of yourself, and I will talk to you next week. Have a, well, the weekend's pretty much over, so have a good week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.